did a story on Instagram and I asked you which video should I do next and the results were so close that I decided to do all of them but this is the first one in that sequence and guys I know it's been a long time since my last video so I do want to apologize my son just got married we were in Chicago now I'm back and on that note let's jump in all right so now we're in resolve and get pumped because I've picked out three completely different shots that we're going to be applying this effect on so the look is already created to save time so we can focus on the actual agenda and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead turn on the idt which is input device transform and you can see this is shot on red and it's getting converted to davinci white gamut and that's the sandwich that i like to work in and then on the output device transform we're taking davinci white gamut converting it to rec 709 meaning everything in between stays in that wide dynamic range primaries i just brought up the image using my hdr offset and i just lifted it about half a stop so we can just see a little bit more and then i am using my super juicy lut that creates that terminator to the judgment day unapologetic blues and reds and it's a very unique look dialed in so you can apply it on any shot and if you want to get access to that i'm going to tell you in a little bit so let's jump in, throw in the glow effect and see what we got. So the biggest tip that I can give you, and that doesn't pertain to just this effect, it could be applied to any effect or any skill, go in with the mindset of a five-year-old. Just go nuts, okay? So what do I mean by that? I applied this effect and nothing really happened, right? Just barely anything happened. So I want you to just start going nuts. Grab this, start moving it around, start playing around with it and see what does what right because that's going to start giving us a lot of insight that we can use to our advantage so okay let's go extreme i can keep it right here then i can go under my spread i can start moving it around okay what is that doing okay that's giving me some ideas right like so if i'm working on something like a music video or something very very extreme i actually can go pretty far with it right and then if i go to the right it's more right for reality right so it's a little bit more real you can remember it that way going left you know that could be just like opposite of right so or opposite of reality so that could be fake right uh, left is a little bit more extreme right is a lot more realistic when you're using spread what else can we pick up here uh hv ratio is your horizontal horizontal and vertical ratio so if i go um left it's vertical so you can see the jj abrams like you know uh, light streaks and if i go to the right I get this very cool effect and it's kind of nice. Like I actually really like what it does, right? Um, time and place for it, right? So maybe not here, but if we want to, we can use it. Uh, relative spread red, like let's see what that does. Let's start moving it around and see what it's doing. Um, so it's pretty crazy when you use it here, right? And you would be like, why would I ever use that? But that changes if I zoom in and once the light comes on, now check it out. So I can actually control the colors on that white right like do i want that white to be more warm like this or do i want that white to be more blue right like what do i want to go with and i can make those little adjustments right here and then pull out um and if i do before and after we're like really started to make a very nice difference right in here and then saturation is a very important one anytime you apply gamma you can see my scopes right here that it adds saturation added as it does its thing okay so if we want to control that or if we just want to go hey give me the effect that's happening because we want to create like this nice bloom in our lights and that's all we want to do here but leave saturation out of it right so i can just go and kill the saturation completely and if i do before and after you can see now it's leaving the saturation as is and it's only giving me the effect which i actually really like now let's just pull out a little bit and we we already played around with it and saw a few things that it does now we can look at it and go what is the purpose that's another huge tip anytime you're using an effect don't just use it because it's a new effect it would be cool blah 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 because then it won't have any substance use it with purpose so here what i want to do from the get-go when i looked at the shot uh, these lights just kind of bothered me they look very digital right and just the image feels and looks digital it doesn't have a nice wrap around or especially like a blooming effect that you would get if you're shooting something with film so i wanted to emulate that and that's why i was inclined to use the glow effect 
So those things are very important when you're getting into using any effect. Another thing that we can look through is composite mode. Like what are all these different composite modes and what do they do? This is a pretty cool effect, right? Um, what if we go to multiply? All right, maybe not so much. What if we go to screen? This is really nice. I mean, let's go forward a little bit and then use screen and then come out of it, go back to add. To be honest with you, like how much add effects and how much it's on the nose, I kind of like what screen is doing. So I want to stay there. So already like we hit a jackpot, right? Um, for this scenario. But what happens if we go to overlay? Uh, what happens if we go to soft light, right? You guys have uh, seen me use soft light quite a bit, uh, but not in this case because we have our objective clear, what we're looking for. So screen is a winner for me, but you can always go and use add. Like if you want a bit more punch, I think screen is just like uh, more realistic and right in the middle. And I kind of like that more. So let me go back here again. And uh, now what do we want to do? So the interesting thing is once you turn off the saturation, look at then what these three do. So all of a sudden they turn into blur channels, right? So like, look at what, what's happening now. All of a sudden I'm having a very different effect. So I can do this with my red channel. I can go into my green. And what do I want? Do I want to kind of bring it closer or do I want to spread it a little bit? So this is where it gets very, very interesting. Like, look at what it's doing in the back to the lights. What a cool effect. Like, look at that. So I'm just looking at those lights and I'm kind of determining like how far or what do I want to do with it? Because now we're just actually kind of getting into the getting into like a very artistic world with it. And this is so cool. This is so cool, right? So now what's happening is um, the, the brightness is kind of out of control. Like, I mean, it's getting crazy, but everything is kosher. Like nothing is blown out. I can still see the detail. This right here parameter that lets you recover some of those bright areas. So I can just go in a little bit. I don't want to choke it too much uh, before and then after. I'm just looking at the, the lamp on the headlight. And I just want to pull it back a little bit. And if I do before and after, I mean, come on. Like, look at this right here, what it's doing. Oh, my God. I'm in love with this. So this looks really good. I mean, look at this, guys. So this is before. And even just like, look, focus, just focus right here. How much light it adds there. And then obviously focus right here to how digital and just like kind of crappy it looks compared to like this like such a nice glow and it belongs like look at right here it belongs like it was always there right like this is how it feels if we punch in same thing with the with the headlamp we can still make out the detail we're not losing anything we're gaining so much more so this is going to be the first way i would use this effect obviously i would say go through it Couple, couple of times to like really understand what was happening. Now, before we move on to the next scenario, if you want to download this slut, it's included in my free training where you will also learn things like how to get the perfect skin tones, shot matching techniques, gamma shift issues, and much, much more. Link to all of that is in the description below. Definitely check it out after this video. Moving on to the next shot. So here did a similar thing. We already created our look. Let's just call this noise reduction. It needed some noise reduction. So first, this footage is shot on Alexa. So we're converting it to DaVinci White Gamut. And then on the back end, we're converting it to Rec. 709 from DaVinci White Gamut. So this is what it looks like. Rec. 709. Log Rec. 709. Not bad. I went ahead and just did my primaries. And I'm like really driving this look into this like magenta world. I kind of like it. Uh, if you look at the... Um, you know, skin tone indicator, it's going a little bit toward that magenta red, but that's my preference. That's the look that I want to, I want to uh, create. So I'm going in that direction, but that's it. Like I just a little nudge, uh, nothing more to it. Okay. And then in my LUT, I'm applying the same LUT uh, that you saw in this shot. So that's the beauty of it. Once you balance your image, you can apply this LUT to anything you got and look at like how good it looks in terms of the lips skin tones and also how much color separation we're getting between the skin tones and the background and uh, you can see it in the scope so just look at it right here how it just stretches everything without cracking anything okay noise reduction was just necessary because if you just look at it here right here right here uh, the image was just like a little noisy so that took care of that 
All right, and then created a window to just kind of focus on our hero. Um, and uh, that's it. So now let's drop on our glow effect. And once again, knowing what you want to achieve. So here, what I want to do is like, it's a close up. We're right up in her face. And I just want to beautify it a little bit. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by changing our composite mode to screen or actually soft light. I'm sorry, soft light. And then we're going to go back into our threshold, shine threshold, and I'm going to crank it back uh, quite a bit. And then I'm just going to pull it back to something like that right here. And already you can see it's such a nice glowy effect. Now I want to go under my spread and I want to kind of pull it back uh, to something like this, because this is where that glowy skin comes into play. Um, obviously, in this case, I don't want the added saturation either because I feel like it was just it's a lot nicer like this. Um, see, like with saturation, I feel like it just gets to be a bit much. So let's just keep the saturation out. And especially because we're going to be using the red, green, blue channels to add even more softness and, and a better light wraparound. OK, so now just look at what's happening. Just keep your eyes on the on her and like what we're doing. So if I go left, this happens. If I go right, it just does like a more even effect. OK, and then I'm back in my red. And most of the action is happening in the green channel. So I'm just going to leave it somewhere around here. And if I do before and after, you see it does like such a nice job. And then in this case, we don't necessarily need to do anything else. Like if I were to just play the shot through, let's go ahead and loop it and then play it. And if we just look at it, so this is before, this is after, like you can just see in all these areas, right? So whether it's like right around here or her arm, how the light is just wrapping around. Let's go to the first frame, especially. And you can see it like right here, right here. And it just does such a nice job bringing everything together and just accentuating everything that's in the frame. Um, great way to use it. And once you do it like this, you can literally just apply it with the same parameters on majority of your footage and it will almost always stick. So that would be the second way to use your glow effect. Moving on to the third way to use your glow effect, I'm going to drop our glow effect on and we're going to move over to somewhere around here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back and change this to soft light. And all of a sudden you see you go, oh, my God. Now, this footage is um, downloaded from Artlist and it's done in uh, Rec. 709. So it already has color on it. You can obviously see it in my scopes. So that's totally fine. Like, let's see what else we can do to it. And just by applying um, the glow effect and changing it to spotlight, oh my God, everything comes to life. But let's just say I don't want to affect the bottom end. I just want to affect the highlights and the clouds. But I kind of like the information before in my buildings here. And that's kind of just like uh, going away, right? Like it's getting too dark. So what we can do is this. It's pretty simple. You have to just go and check this guy right here, alpha limits effect, and then go in your qualifier. Here, what I can do is just create some softness here and start pulling this in. So I'm going to hit shift H so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start pulling this in, maybe not as soft, and then start pulling this in and see what I want to affect. So basically, everything that is getting gray is not going to get selected. It's only going to affect everything else. So let's come out of highlights and see where the effect is being applied. Maybe we can pull back a little bit, actually. Something like that. So this is a lot better than what was happening before. All right. So now that we applied our qualifier, we're ready to go. Let's start messing around with our shine threshold. This time, what I want to do is I want to go all the way back. So it's in full effect before and after it's in full effect. So you would be like, dude, it looks like garbage. What are you doing? That's OK. We're going to take our spread. We're going to move it to the right. Right. Right is for realistic or reality. So we're going to keep it somewhere around here. So basically this time we're going to leave the saturation as is. And let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to click on color filter and check this out. How freaking cool is this? So let's just do something extreme, OK? I'm like really going to push it, like almost like too much and something like that, because I feel like this is not even too much. 
when you like if you've ever been to texas they get the craziest purplest like sunsets this i'm buying so check this out like what we just did with one node one effect with a little bit of knowledge we were able to create this amazing amazing look on our rec 709 footage most of the time i tell you stay away from like secondaries and all those other fancy tools focus on primaries and all the basics and you can achieve really high-end results that is true but if you notice we didn't just use the glow effect for the heck of it we used it because it was needed that helped us get the job done so i want you to keep that in mind next time you're using any tool like it needs to have a purpose attached to it on that note, guys, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.